Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. As noted in the opening segment, I have not watched any of the Warrior documentary. And last night on the Brian and Vinny show, where for some reason everybody wanted us to review Halloween Havoc 93. In hindsight, I have absolutely no idea why. That show did not age well. We talk about Tuesday. What are we going to review on Tuesday? Normally, we've been reviewing these A&E documentaries. And some people like it. Some people hate it. We did the Booker T documentary, and it was just one after another. Stop reviewing these A&E documentaries. Stop reviewing them. I was like, all right, listen. I want to do the Shawn Michaels one. After that, if you guys don't want me to review them anymore, we won't. So we reviewed the Shawn Michaels one, which I thought was very good. And next up was the Warrior one this weekend. And I have been bombarded with feedback on this Warrior documentary. And interestingly enough, it is very, very split. The first feedback I got was, holy smokes, it actually was much better than I expected. It was really good. They talked about his, all of the issues that he, uh, uh, I, don't, I shouldn't say that he dealt with. These were issues that he was responsible for. They talked about all of the terrible things that he said, all the terrible things that he wrote. They addressed all of that in the documentary. I couldn't believe it. It's a WWE production. So I thought, oh, well, how about that? And uh, then I started getting flooded with other uh, feedback. Uh, This one, for example, the Warrior documentary, A Big Bold Lie, Colin says. Lots of WWE propaganda. Uh, Also about how WWE was so good to him while he was so terrible to them. Basically another WWE whitewashing BS doc not worth watching. Dark Side of the Ring will be interesting on their take on... Jim Helwig, WWE apologists, a-holes like Sam Roberts, Peter Rosenberg, featured all over this doc. You are going to despise it. So I thought, ah, that sounds horrible. And then I had a bunch of people going, we want you to review it on Tuesday. I was like, what do you guys want? This sounds horrible. Why should it? Oh, you want me to yell about the warrior for an hour? Is that what it is? So anyway, I want everyone's thoughts on this documentary because usually it's either everybody thinks it sucks or everybody likes it. This is the one where some people thought it was fine, probably because they had low expectations, and other people thought the thing was horrible. So I'll decide in the next uh, 12 hours if we're going to watch this tomorrow or not. Did you see this, Mike? I did not. I'll wait till you report back to me on these. I'm not a big proponent of the WWE documentary series as it appears on a and e from the little bits and pieces that i've seen i haven't seen a reason to stick around for an entire thing because it's not fully honest it is fully honest through the lens of the filmmaker and then wwe is the i guess executive producer on top of it uh sorry i just you know again the booker t story there would be nothing there that i don't already know like most of these stories, what they're going to do is leave a lot of things out in some cases and in other cases, concentrate heavily on the negative as they did in the Randy Savage documentary. There seems to be no consistency to this because they're using different filmmakers and they seem to be using a different standard with how they check everything off. I'm not saying that the Dark Side of the Ring documentary on Ultimate Warrior will be better than what WWE did. I can't say that right now because it hasn't aired yet and I haven't seen the WWE version. But I can say this, I trust Hunzi and those guys you know, who are in charge of Dark Side of the Ring far more than I trust WWE to tell me a story about history. Ron here says, Warrior biography was absolutely horrible, a chore to go through. The series still has the same issues with knuckleheads like Sam Roberts talking about a certain subject. They hardly interviewed any wrestlers Warrior worked with. And why is Russo being asked questions when he wasn't involved with creative there in the early 90s? This person says 80% of the Warrior doc was then pretending Warrior was a swell guy and not a raging racist and homophobe, unwatchable garbage. Person says, Ultimate Warrior documentary, complete bull crap, and WWE just rewriting history. This person, Ultimate Warrior documentary, holy smokes, totally biased 90-minute WWE propaganda piece. Safe to say the worst one yet, and he ranks them here. Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, Booker T, Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, and Warrior. I'd have to see if I want to rank them the same way. I did think that the, the Shawn Michaels one was great. The Steve Austin one was great. 
The Booker T one when talking about his life growing up and his life after wrestling. Those parts were great. The rest was just fluff. The Savage one was... I mean, what I would recommend everybody, if you watch the Randy Savage one, is to go to this week's Observer because there is a long... I don't know where he actually did the interview at, but Dave transcribes it in the Observer. It is a it is a long uh, piece by uh, uh, um, Lenny Poffo, who is Randy Savage's brother. And one of the problems, obviously, that I had with the Savage documentary is, like, God bless the guy. I hate to keep getting on him, but why do I need Kurt Hawkins talking about Randy Savage's baseball career? Uh, you had the dude's brother. So they just needed more talking heads on there or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, Lanny knows more about Randy than pretty much anybody alive today. And so Lanny goes through all of the pluses and the minuses of the Randy Savage documentary. And he has a lot of other stuff that he he puts in there that didn't make the final cut, why he said certain things, et cetera, et cetera. It's actually a very, very interesting read. So I would read that if you were Lanny, if you were uh, if you watch a Savage documentary. Did he write it in rhyme? No, he did not. But wow. he did talk about how uh, if you watch the documentary, Lanny and Randy had a very interesting relationship where Lanny was the younger brother. And so Randy was like in charge, like he was totally in charge. He was basically like another father. Lanny treated Randy like his father as opposed to like his brother. And so anything that Randy wanted to do, whatever, it was like Lanny would just go along with it. You know, Randy would have the final word, et cetera, et cetera. A very weird relationship. But Lanny loved his brother, and he very much appreciated that everywhere that Randy went, he got a job for his brother. And so there's that part of him that's always going to say positive things about Randy, but he was largely honest about a lot of things, I feel. But what he said was, the only thing that Randy ever asked me to do, ever, that I said no to, was he wanted me to write, be a man. Remember Be a Man, Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> One of the great rap songs of all time. Ever. He wanted Lanny to write it. And Lanny refused because in Lanny's mind, I was a wrestler for a long time. And the best four months of my life in wrestling, the best four months of my wrestling career were when I feuded with Hulk Hogan. Oh, and perfect. we went all over the place and I got to do big matches with Hulk Hogan, and we main evented. I made more money than I ever made in wrestling those four months with Hulk. Hulk always treated me right, and therefore I cannot in good conscience write a negative rap song about Hulk Hogan. So he refused. It was the only thing he ever told his brother he wouldn't do. So then his brother said, well, how about you write, um, I forget the other song it was. It might have been Hulkster in Heaven, or now that was on Hulk's. God, what was the other song? <laughs> so anyway, there was another song. Uh, Hulkster. No, you know what it was? It was uh, it was the song on on Randy Savage's rap album about Mr. Perfect because he really liked Mr. Uh, Perfect. Yes. So he wrote that one, but then he ultimately ended up disappointed because Randy <laughs> totally rewrote it, and so the final song actually wasn't the song that Lanny wrote. But anyway, the, the Lanny thing is really good. And then quickly, I saw the Piper one as well. And the Piper one's really interesting. But listen, I had many run-ins with Roddy Piper, especially in a period where he was in rough shape. And Roddy Piper was, more than anything else, a complete and total worker, okay? Mm. So when they went over the history of Roddy Piper, like a lot of the history of Roddy Piper was the history that Roddy Piper told people, which, how can I believe that? How could anybody believe that? So that one was kind of, that was sort of hit and miss. But I have not hated the any documentary as much as some people have. I thought that uh, some of them were actually, especially the Shawn Michaels one, that one was quite good. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.